It is time for a trashy but very pleasing project. Well, I say trashy, it's using quite good quality materials, but it's using trashy materials as well. This is photoluminescent pigment powder. It's uh, the aquamarine blue version, and this is based on strontium aluminate powder. I shall go into the supplier of this in a moment. These are silicon moulds from eBay, not too expensive. They're actually sold as being for use in pendants, the idea being that you... Uh, cast your little object and these create a nice uh, water ripple effect and then once you've cast it in resin with inclusions if you wish you demold it and then clean it up and drill a hole and insert your little sort of hanger into it but in this case i'm actually going to be making little blocks of glow in the dark uh, resin with that sort of water ripple in there i don't know can you see that water ripple let's look at the big one the big one has the water ripple effect which just looks like blobs of silicon to be honest but that's okay these aren't that expensive you can either get them individually or as a set and they all come pretty much stacked in here in some sort of jigsaw puzzle way you can never get them back in after once you've taken them out so the pigment itself well let's take a look at the source of these and you know what i couldn't find the keywords in my own gmail to actually find where uh, the listing i'd got these from but I, I kept searching and i found this listing and it was seven pounds pretty sure it didn't pay seven pounds the the other set but um it's described as crystal adhesive glue silicone 3d water ripple mold diy jewelry pendant pattern this one came from a chinese seller called denya kim d-e-n-y-a-k-i-m but if you search for the silicon molds you'll find lots and lots of them available they're very good they're just so cheap compared to what it used to be the pigment i got from a uk seller you'll just have to find a local seller because it does weigh quite a bit you could get it from china but i thought i'd try this stuff because it looks quite good quality it turns out that it's a uh, ellie glow bland Ellie Glow brand, Ellie Glow brand, and it came with this uh, flyer. Ellie Glow, daylight and darkness. Keep your world, keep your world up all night. Okay, and they show various uh, projects or products that they make with it. I looked on their website. It's cheaper getting it off this listing. I just thought I'd mention that. Um, it cost uh, fourteen pounds twenty-two, inclusive of shipping, for this big one hundred gram bag, and I think that's pretty good for aluminium. Al aluminum uh, strontium aluminate so this is glow in the dark pigment powder 100 grams aqua blue super grade strontium aluminate find a local supplier this one was frye uk5 f-r-i-e uk5 that it came from you'll recognize it when you type the uh, strontium aluminate 100 grams you'll see the sort of the jars that they've got of it okay Let's do the project. The resin I'm going to be using is just going to be uh, this dollar store, this pound shop resin. This came from Poundland. It cost a pound. This is probably not a surprise. I've warmed this up slightly so the resin flows better. I've got a fluorescent shot glass, plastic disposable shot glass. I've got a stolen wooden stirrer from Conrad's Coffee Shop in Ramsey in the Isle of Man. Sorry, Connor, I've stolen none of your stirrers. And uh, let's do it. Let's add plenty of this pigment into this, and I'll just talk about what I'm doing as I do it. So, let's cut the top off these to reveal the little ports that I think I'm going to be using the whole lot as a as one go anyway. So I'm going to squirt this in, and once I've done that, I'm going to have to be careful because it's warmed up. And when you warm up resin, it tends to cure a lot faster. So I'm going to put a decent amount in, in here because I want to, if I'm fill this one up and I won't be filling it right to the brim because I don't think there's any advantage to that. If I fill it up and uh, there's some left I'll just pour it into another one. So there's a wee bit left. I shall put the little cap on. It's keyed so it only goes on one way around. To be honest I think I should cut a bit more plastic off but I didn't but that'll do. So let's mix that with Con Connor's stolen stirrer here. Oh that is very very mixable. I'll have to be very careful to mix this. What could go wrong here is if this is too warm, and this is what happens in summer, uh, if it's too warm, before you've had a chance to mix this up properly, it starts to go off because I'm going to add the strontium aluminate now. So I'm going to have to work fast here. Someone suggested in the past when I did a similar project that if you get the separate resins, you can uh, put the pigment into one of the resins first. I'm going to put a fairly decent quantity of pigment there. I shall mix that in and see how it goes. I'd like to mention that this pigment is 
uh, non-toxic, it says in the back here. Let's use plenty because it's quite easy to mix it into the resin. It's fairly expensive, but theoretically, the more I mix in, the brighter it's going to get. Oh, I'm sp spilling glow-in-the-dark pigment everywhere. So this is the strontium illuminate as opposed to the zinc version. This is the modern version that is so much brighter. So I'm going to choose this big mould first. And I'm going to pour the stuff in. There will be air bubbles. I'm not going to pour too thick a layer. I'm going to keep it fairly thin because I think that... Uh, I don't think there's an advantage to filling that mould right up to the brim. I've done it with another mould. I did it with the round one with traditional green pigment and uh, I felt that it didn't really benefit from the extra depth. So that is looking okay. I shall let that settle into the corners. I shall help it settle into the corners. I may use the heat gun to flow it. Uh, I shall also make another block here because I've got some more resin. I'm just cautious about this resin suddenly going off. Because uh, if it is warm, and I have really warmed it, there is the chance that it's going to just gel. And once it gels, it won't flow as well. And there's a bit more. Let's do the round one. Actually, I don't think there's enough for the round one. But I'm just going to put it in there anyway. What's the worst could happen? I could put it into the triangular one. It looks smaller, but I've already started putting it into the round one, so there's no going back. Technically speaking, I should have zoomed down in this, shouldn't I? I don't think it really matters too much. I think you can more or less see what I'm doing. It is really just, it's not something that's terribly detailed anyway. And I'm thinking I might be tempted to use the hot air gun. And I don't know if, uh, maybe I'm just leaving this a bit too late now. Uh, to help soften. If you heat the resin with a hot air gun, it not only triggers it to cure quickly, but also encourages all the bubbles to float to the surface. Don't worry about having a bit left over in the tub. It looks quite nice afterwards anyway. It just kind of glows. Let's put that stir over there. Let's bring the heat gun in. And we'll start with uh, this one because I want to actually flow it a bit. So this tends to make it flow a bit better. The warmth makes the bubbles come to the surface. You can see the bubbles all bursting when I do that. Maybe you can see the bubbles bursting. And it just seems to encourage the bubbles to the top, although there always is the risk that you're going to get bubbles at the bottom. It might be better actually pouring it as multiple layers. But we shall see. This is all pretty much experimental. Where it's actually... Heating it, you can see the uh, resins spreading and flowing. This one's so thin that there is actually, I think one of the riffle, riffles here is actually sort of showing through it a, a wee bit. It's not going to be very thick in that position, but that's okay. It was just leftover resin anyway. And then once I've done this, I shall pause, because it won't take long for this resin to kick off. It's already kicking off. Do you see a slight coloration change? Uh, and then I'll be back in a moment and we'll turn them out and we'll charge them up with light and we'll see what they look like. That should be long enough. The resin, you may notice a sort of darkness in there. This is another advantage of not pouring thick, thick layers because as it heats up and as it trips and it starts curing, it can get so hot that it actually burns the resin. So that's where either using the slow curing resin or just making thin layers and multiple thin layers helps. In this case, I don't think there's an advantage, as I said earlier, to going with a thicker layer. This is made with a green strontium illuminate. The advantage of the green is that it's visually brighter initially, but the aqua coloured stuff has a much longer glow time. So to get this out, these will just easily pop out the moulds, he hoped. They do. They come out very easily from the silicon. There's a wee bit of flash there. I shall just take that off. Tiny little bubble in there. It's not any great deal. This is perhaps another advantage of doing it with a slower curing resin so that the bubbles can rise to the surface. The round one, I tried adding a bit more on top. As one does, you should never faff around with resin. Oh, and look at the big bubble there. That's quite annoying, but that's okay. It's fine. And this one also just pops out easily. 
Right, what I'm going to do now, I'm going to charge these with light and then we shall take a look at them. I reckon this one will outshine the others, so I might take it off uh, off shot uh, once I've uh, charged them up if it's too bright. Because it will do that thing that, you know, if you left them next to each other, the others, the other ones, the aqua ones, would end up brighter than this one, but only after a certain length of time. So I'll charge them up now. And glow, and you can see the green just absolutely washes the others out for intensity. The others are really quite dim looking. They're fairly, they're not too bad. They're visibly glowing here, but they're not as bright as the green. But over time, theoretically, because I've never actually tested this, it's what they say in the instructions, the, these ones will end up glowing longer at night time. But there we have it. It's a simple enough project to make little glowing rocks. Uh, I'll turn the light on, just shield your eyes momentarily. Pow. Uh, but a project to make nice little glowing water ripple shapes using these silicon moulds. You can get all sorts of moulds off eBay and just standard dollar store type resin. Or if you wish, you could use the clear casting resin and just make sure you just add enough activator to give it plenty of time to set slowly and allow all the bubbles to surface. But there we go. It's quite a nice effect. I'm going to put them next to my bed now, and if I actually wake up middle of the night, check them out and see how bright they are.